Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day and welcome to the first episode in the series of Motorsport History. This time, we'll be taking a look at DTM, which stands for Deutsche Tourenwagen Meisterschaft. Native speakers, do excuse my pronunciation. The first signs of DTM were seen in 1984, where the racing was done by private teams that were regulated by the FIA. This class fell under the restrictions of Group A, which was later altered to be Class 1 touring cars. Throughout the years, things changed and the cars were allowed to undergo more extensive modification, but also rules such as having no turbines came in and out and engine size limitations were induced. So obviously, it was still nothing infinite like the age of Group B. Be sure to stay tuned because a video about that will be coming out very soon. In the late 1980s, once more teams joined the sport, we saw a huge rise in popularity, and I'm sure most of you have seen these races. absolutely spectacular. But enough of that, I'm here to talk about the cars. The main competitors were the top three German brands of today, Audi, BMW and Mercedes-Benz, alongside with honorable mentions such as Alfa Romeo and Opel. But we all know which were the two legends that we see in all the most popular DTM pictures and videos. It's the BMW E30 M3 and the Mercedes-Benz 190e Evolution. These cars were monsters on the track. The E30 came with that aggressive and boxy styling of the late 80s, making the silhouette of this car unmistakable. But the real beast lays in the hearts of these cars. The earlier models came with a naturally aspirated 2.3 liter dual overhead cam 4 cylinder pushing out around 200 horsepower. And once the regulations changed, they decided to strap in a 2.5 liter with an output just shy of 240 horsepower. And some of you might think, well that's not all that much, my 2 liter turbo diesel pushes out 200 daily. But this was the late 80s and early 90s and you had to be a brilliant engineer to build a high horsepower engine with no forced induction. These cars had completely stripped interiors, meaning no weight, and the front engine rear wheel drive layout kept their balance. The E30 was successful through the seasons of 1984 to 1990, but that's when BMW started racing with the 635 CSI and things took a bad turn for the team. They didn't get another win till 2012, but that's already ahead of the time. We are here to talk about the greatest era, the golden era, the 80s and 90s. The 190E became the new champ for the following years of 1991 till 1995, but they too took a loss in 1993 when the Italians came in first with their Alfa Romeo 155, which was powered by a V6 and all-wheel drive.
Nevertheless, the 190A made a strong name for itself. The most well-known version of course is the Evolution, with the 2.3 liter, 16 valve, dual overhead cam, 4 cylinder with rear wheel drive, a very similar formula to the E30. Last but not least, in 1996, Mercedes-Benz was beaten by Opel, using their stunning V6 caliber that was slowly sneaking through the shadow of the 190E into first place. claiming the win of the final DTM season before the year 2000. If you like what you're seeing and would like to hear more about it, be sure to show some support. I greatly appreciate it and I'd be happy to make a part 2 of the DTM series talking about the seasons of the early 2000s, where Audi makes their great entrance. Stay safe out there and I'll be back with weekly uploads.